This is Jack Jackson. We're going to go over some review problems reviewing the material from this first unit on descriptive statistics. Uh, these problems are actually from a practice test that I've given in my class. So, uh, look at the first question here. It says, type in the appropriate terms completing the definitions below. We do have to spell these correctly for the software to count it correct. And we do have to, of course, know some basic terminology in any field, including statistics. So the complete collection of all items of interest is called the population. A subset of items of interest that are measured and examined is called a sample. A characteristic or property of an individual item of interest which may change from individual to individual is called a variable. Data that can take on only finitely many or countably infinitely many values is said to be discrete data. Data that can take on infinitely many values, such as all the values within an interval of real numbers, is said to be continuous data. A sample of data that is chosen so that each subset of data of appropriate size is equally likely to be included in the sample is said to be a simple random sample. And a sample of data that is chosen so that each individual value is equally likely to be included in the sample is a random sample. Next question. A number calculated to describe some characteristic of a population is called a parameter. The same thing for a sample. A number calculated to describe some characteristic of a sample is called a sample statistic. Notice population and parameter both start with P. Sample and statistic both start with S. The highest score of Dr. Jackson's students on the final exam taken by all college algebra students is a statistic because Dr. Jackson's students would be a sample of the larger population. And the highest score would be a statistic. Yeah. The average height of all UA Fort Smith students then could be a parameter if the population were the entire set of students at the university. Computing numerical and graphical statistics for a data, set of data is known as descriptive statistics. So descriptive statistics were just describing data. Starting with a known sample and making predictions and decisions about the entire population is known as inferential statistics. That's really where we're going with all this stuff eventually. If we start with the population with known properties and we assign a likelihood to each event, a sample, then we are computing probabilities. Identify the type of data measured in each situation below. The diameter of a piston is quantitative because it's a number answer and it is continuous. All real values within a certain range are uh, possible there. The color of a piston, however, is qualitative. It is only uh, an attribute only. The weight of a piston is quantitative and it's qu continuous. If you measure finely enough, you do get a number there over any particular number, real number in an interval. That's continuous. The number of defective pistons in a sample is just a count and that's going to be quantitative but discrete. Now we have our four levels of data. Actually our next question is this one. They're in order, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio from lowest to highest. Notice the first letters spell the word NOR in OIR. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about each one of those here as we answer this question. Suppose we're measuring the diameter of a piston. What level is this a measurement? Well, that is ratio. So ratio is the highest level. It has order. It has, no has number. It has uh, differences make sense and ratios make sense. There is a true zero that means nothing. Um, so that's ratio. Measuring color of a piston. Color is an attribute only qualitative data, that's going to be a nominal level. Okay, there's no inherent order in it. Suppose that we're measuring the temperature of a room on Celsius scale, what level is this? This is interval. So temperature on the Celsius or Fahrenheit scales or dates are, um, are the, about the only thing I know of that are interval levels because there's an arbitrary zero there. There's not a true zero. So it doesn't make sense to say that 100 degrees is twice as hot as 50 degrees uh, in the Celsius or the Fahrenheit doesn't make sense. 
uh, but it is, but, but differences do make sense. So that is interval, but not ratio. And if you're measuring something on a survey, strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, strongly disagree, this kind of Likert scale is a very good example of something that's ordinal, has an order to it. Okay, which of these is not a measure of central tendency? Well, mid-range, mean, median, mode are measures of central tendency. Interquartile range is a measure of variability, so C, interquartile range. Which is not a measure of relative standing, that would be standard deviation, which is a measure of variability. Quartiles, percentiles, z-score, and median are all measures of relative standing. Which is not a measure of variability, frequency is not a measure of variability, it's just a measure of size. Mean absolute deviation, variation, standard deviation, and interquartile rings are all measures of variability. The mean is a measure of central tendency. The standard deviation is a measure of variability. Quartiles are measures of relative standing. And the mode is a measure of central tendency. The mean absolute deviation is a measure of variability. Okay, in this one, you have to click on this icon to pull up some, some data here. And we have, we have uh, some data here, so 50 data points that you can see. And we simply go through here for frequency, do we just count them? Email. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and we're missing a couple at the bottom, 14. Okay, and similarly there are 8 for eight male, 13 that are both, 15, no answer. And so the actual counts are frequencies. Relative frequencies, what we want to do with each of these numbers is as divide by how many we have. So I'm just going to use a calculator to help me out here. So here's a TI-84 uh, calculator. And I can add these up. 14 plus 8 plus 13 plus 15 is 50. So I'm taking 14 and dividing by 50. 0.28, 8 divided by 50 and so forth, and these are relative frequencies. They could be expressed as fractions, decimals, or percents. This says use integers or decimals. And then find the pie chart or circle graph that, that works the best for this. So these percentages, 28% um, for email should be the biggest, biggest slice of the pie. Uh, a little over a fourth of the, of the pie. E, uh, male, 16%, is a little bit less. Both is about the same. So the both and the email will be, be close to the same. Okay, the 26% for both on the email and 28 for email, 26 for both, 16 for male. Looks like this last one over here is the one that fits the bill for that. Now, by the way, let me show you something you can do with your calculator. You can go to Calc, Edit. We can go up here and clear this out. So I'm going to clear out these lists. And here I entered the, I can enter the counts here. Of 14, 8, 13, and 15. I can also quit and, and go to List and say, Go to operations, and let's go to math actually, and do number five, sum list one, which is 50. Now, if I go back to stat and edit, I can go to list two, put it on list two, and say it's going to be equal to list one divided by 50. And that gives me the answers to the table for the next one. Okay. If I want to do a cumulative sum, so this, this list one is frequency, list two is relative frequency, think percentage or decimal part of a whole or fraction of a whole. We could also do list three here and do uh, 
Let's see, go to list, math, ops, ops, cumulative sum, six. Tell it to do the cumulative sum of list one and see what it does. This does cumulative frequency. Now, cumulative frequency doesn't make much much sense in this case because this is this is only nominal data. So you wouldn't really do a cumulative frequency here. But if this was in an order, if this was ordinal data or above, then cumulative frequency would make sense. Okay. Construct a bar chart for this. Okay, this is the one that works out here. The tallest bar should be uh, actually 30%, not no answer. Okay, not available. That's that's going to be the tallest bar. And these other two bars here for email and both are pretty close. The smallest bar is for mail. And you can look at your scale to see that, that, that that's, uh, that's right. It, it makes sense in this case for the bars not to touch because this is um, uh, or uh, not not it's a uh, nominal data when it's attributes only the bars don't touch when it's continuous data then we have the bars the bars touch okay so here we go and do a dot plot so notice we got zeros ones and twos and threes notice we should have two dots at zero one, two, three, four, five dots at one, three dots at two, and one dot at three. And that's this one down here, D. Two, five, three, and two. Okay, so here we have a stem and leaf plot. This time the stems are the whole numbers. And it looks like we got things running from uh, 26 point something up to about 30 point something and you just go through here one at a time and and work this out so let me kind of show you how this how this works here uh, so you got 26 27 28 29 30 and then those, then those are your stems and then you put this here 26.1 puts a 1 here 27.9 puts a 9 here 29.6 put a 6 here 27.2, you put a 2 here. 29.4, put a 4 here. Continuing on, 1, 4, 4, 9, 0, 0, 8 on the 27s, 9 on the 26s, 9 on the 20, 5 on the 29s, 2 on the 28s, Zero on the 29s, one on the 28s, six on the 28s, nine on the 27s, three on the 27s, seven on the 28s, one on the 27s, five on the 28s, and nine on the 30s. Then you re then you just reorder this. So this is a stem and leaf, so this is an order stem and leaf, 1 and 9. And here we go, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, and you got 8 and 2 9s. For 28, we got a 0, 1, and 2, and then 2 4s, a 5, a 6, and a 7. And this one goes 0, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 0, 9. So the, these in order, we just put our data in order. 26.1, 26.9, 27.1, 27.1, and so forth. So this is what the, what the plot should look like. And we have that. Looks like I missed one. Four. Got 
24. Says there's two twenty six point nines. Let's see one there and one there. Yeah, I missed one somewhere. So that means one of my other ones is wrong. So one of the ones I wrote down wrong. Hope maybe you caught it whenever you were watching me. This one right here. Apparently, I put that on the 29 instead of the 26. That one should have been up here. Okay, and so that is the that's the stem and leaf. Okay, using one line per stem, and then it asks us to do the same thing, but break it apart in two lines per stem. Now, the way that works is you put the lower 26 is here. The upper 26 is here, 27, 28, 29, 30, like this, and you just break it apart. So the first one is going to have 0 to 4 up here, and this one will have 5 to 9, so it breaks apart like this. So 0 to 4 on the lower one. One to, uh, five to nine on the second one, and so we break it apart like that for a stem and leaf, where we break it into two per two lines per stem. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you'd rather have this one over here. Sometimes you'd rather have this one. It kind of just depends on the data. If you have very few stems, then you may want to break it apart. Or if these these are really long, a uh, lot of numbers on each one. Sometimes it's helpful to break it apart a little bit. Hopefully that is uh, what we have here. Next question. Um, so we have a dot plot here given of heights and inches for, for this. Um, baseball players on a certain team and there you see their heights there. Discuss the basic shape of it. Well, if you look at it, it's basically coming up with a longer tail. It's more grouped in the right and the tail's off to the left. So that would be what we call left skewed. Okay, overall shape is left skewed. The distribution is called left skewed then. So the right or left determines where the long tail is. So the longer tail, more stretched out on the left, more bunched on the right. Okay, so here we have a bar graph. Oh, this is not a good bar graph. Um, the bar graph should always go down to zero. If they wanted a graph like this, they should have the, they should have the, the dots here. What's wrong? Oh, that's what they're asking about. Vertical axis does not start at zero, so the relative sizes are misleading. So if the top, if you go by the tops of the bars, you can read those off, and then that they go down to zero. Well, if you do this, these are so small, so close, they're all between 3 and 3.1. So if you make this go all the way down to zero, the tops of the bars are going to look almost the same. So what looks like a lot of up and down really is very little when it's considered as a, as, as a, as a whole. Uh, it would be okay to have this with dots and broken line, but if you have bars, they must always go down to the x-axis. Okay, here's where we look at some basic formulas for some descriptive statistics and know what they mean. So this first one, the sum from k equals 1 to n of x sub k over n, this says take all your data values, add them up, divide it by how many you have. That's a mean. Since this is little n here, then this is a sample mean. If it had been capital N here, it would have been a population mean. This uses capital N mu and mu, so we know we're dealing with something of the population. We're taking the x's, subtracting the mean, so it's deviations from the mean squared, and then averaging those up, adding them up and divide by n. 
That's the variance. Then we take the square root. That's a standard deviation. So that's a population standard deviation. Okay. Little n denotes the sample size. Sigma, Greek letter sigma, is a population standard deviation. S would be the sample standard deviation. Um, if you sum up the absolute values of the distances from the mean from x divided by n, that's the mean absolute deviation. That's a sample mean absolute deviation there. Maximum minus minimum is the range. Maximum plus minimum divided by 2 is a point halfway between the maximum and minimum. That's called the mid-range. Range is a measure of, of uh, variability. Mid-range is a measure of center. The single most often occurring data value is the mode. Name and describe the three most important measures of center. The mean, median, mode are the three most important measures of center. The mean is the arithmetic average. The median is the middle value in an ordered list, and the mode is the most frequently occurring. So that is the correct answer. Let's see what's wrong with these others. Product of the observations divided by observations. No, it's, it's the sum, not the product. Um, mean is not the lowest, it's the middle one in the ordered list. And in data, mode is not the least frequently, it's the most frequently, so all three of those are wrong. The sample size of the data, okay, the sample size is not a measure of central tendency at all. So that knocks those two out too. It was reported in 2004 the mean, mean net worth of families of the certain region was uh, four hundred nineteen dollars uh, and sixty cents. The no, four hundred nineteen point six thousand dollars. The median net worth was ninety five point five thousand. Which measure center do you think is more appropriate? Well, uh, mean is going to be uh, drastically affected by a few outliers. So a few really rich people are going to pull that up. And especially if you look, that's what's happening here more than likely when you have both the numbers looking at you. If we put them all in order, the one in the middle, the median, is 95.5 thousand. So 95,500 dollars. That is going to be half the people make below that, half above that in that region. And then look at this 419. That's really high. It's because you've got in this region you've got a few multi-millionaires probably that are bringing that way up. So the median is not strongly affected by relatively few families with high net worth. So that's going to be the correct answer. Find the mean, median, and the mode of a data set. Well, one way we can do this is, is make use of our calculator. And it will do all of them. So I'm going to clear these lists out. Clear. So I put my cursor on the L1, clear and enter. And then I'm going to type in the data. 120, enter. Uh, 145, enter. 138, enter. 136, enter. And so forth until I get all of the data in here. Okay, notice I've entered 14 values so far. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I had the right number of data values at least, and hopefully I typed them in right. It'd be a good idea to check them over at this point. Now, then you quit and just go to Stat, Calculate, number 1, one variable statistics for list 1, and tell it to calculate. And we get the mean of 134.2, rounding to the tenth. The median is given down here, 133. And the mode, it's a little harder to see the mode, okay? So, but we can, it doesn't calculate it directly. But we can take our list and go to the second list, go to ops, sort it in ascending order, our list one. 
and now when we look back at our list, our, our stat edit, our list is in order. So I see two 120s. I see one, two, three, four, two, three, four, 130s. I don't see anything more than that. So the 130 is, is uh, the mode. Of course, there's a possibility the mode might not exist. The mean and the median will always exist. Let's stop right there, and we'll come back in another video and hit the rest of these uh, answers.